profession. But my, my role in the province of Ontario as a provincial member, being a member of Her Ma uh, Majesty's loyal opposition, it's my duty to hold this government here in Ontario to account and uh, hold the incumbent uh, government accountable. They're uh, here till October, uh, and uh, we'll see what happens after October the 6th. And I'm not here to sing their praises, but rather a humbly attempt to uh, hold them to account and maybe point out some shortcomings that uh, might not be so obvious. I'd like to extend a thank you to all of our local municipal officials that are here today, and I'm very proud of what uh, uh, Pat and myself and them working together have been able to do, in, especially in 2010, but since I've been elected, but especially this last year with the infrastructure investments that uh, were like a joint project between the three governments. <coughs> working together over the last year, Lambton County has received over $144 million in infrastructure funding through the three uh, governments uh, when they pooled together. In 2010, the county alone has seen over $50 million in provincial investment, something that I'm quite proud of and it was a pleasure to work and I'd like to commend the, the county uh, governments, the municipal governments, their staff especially, for all the work that went into those, uh, those, uh, per those uh, proposals that they made to our level of government as well and the feds. And I know it takes a lot of staff time and uh, commitment to make those uh, proposals and do the paperwork and hope that at the end of the day you'll be successful. Uh, these, uh, this money was able to improve wastewater management, roads, sewer management, building community <coughs> centers, expanding trail systems, making our communities more accessible to handicapped, and creating local jobs. Federal, provincial infrastructure partnerships are building a brighter future for our community of Sarnia Lambton. So today, seeing that we're now in an election year, building up to October 6th, I'd like to share with you three ways that the Ontario PC Caucus, led by Tim Hudak, would change the, the path that Ontario is currently on to put families first. We believe that Ontario can lead again. The first change we need is that we need to help you, as our province is small and large business owners. Small private sector businesses are the economic engine of our province, and we need to find out how we can assist you to return our province to a positive job creation and economic development, rather than investing in bigger and bigger government every day. If big government spending was a solution, we'd be in an economic nirvana right now, but we're not. Over the last eight years, Ontario's GDP, or gross domestic product, has grown by little more than 9%. However, government spending in this province has increased by over 70%, a rate nearly eight times as fast as the growth of the GDP. If anyone knows that that's not sustainable. I remember pointing this out in 2007, long before the recession, uh, during the last election campaign, and uh, it was kind of uh, given short shrift by uh, some of the candidates at the time, but it's, and unfortunately it's come to uh, fruition that, that we were right. Well, the public sector, public sector employment has grown by nearly 300,000 positions. There are almost 300,000 manufacturing jobs have been lost in this province. <coughs> this kind of spending means this, court, this government is on course to single-handedly, in their term, double Ontario's long-term debt by 2012, 2012. If we could learn anything from this example, it's that more government spending doesn't necessarily equate to better services or a stronger economy. Instead, I firmly believe it's the government's role to create the right conditions for private sector job creation and then get out of the way and let small business and the business community do their job. It's time for government to stop treating small business owners like part of the problem and start treating you with that trust and mutual respect that you deserve. We need to cut red tape ensuring reliable, affordable energy, and making Ontario's taxes more competitive. I applaud the federal government for their move on the uh, Red Tape Commission. It's something that we've been advocating here in this province, and I noticed that, uh, maybe it's just a coincidence, but the finance minister here in Ontario is uh, starting to look at uh, merging some uh, town corporations and going to see if there's some uh, economies of scale that they can do there by merging those, and that's something that should have been done a long time ago. We've been talking about it for about the last year, and I'm happy to say that uh, looks like they're making some moves in that way, and we're going to push them to do more. We must treat energy policy in this province as an economic policy and not a social experiment. We've had enough of social engineering where we're trying to tell people when they should get up and bath their, bath their children and have them ready for the bus before 7 o'clock in the morning to take advantage of uh, low, lower hydro rates, and as far as telling seniors to get up after 11 o'clock <coughs> and do the laundry. We've had enough of that in this province, and so if we're the government, that's going to come to an end. As I'm sure all of you can attest to, the high cost of electricity is one of the biggest costs of running a business in Ontario today. In particular, I've heard from people that run restaurants, people in the printing business, and industry in the Chemical Valley here alone, 
that have been hard hit in our area because of energy price increases. Over the last eight years, hydro rates have increased by over 75%, and more is yet to come. Last autumn, the government finally admitted, under pressure from the opposition, that bills in this province are expected to go up a further 46% over the next uh, <coughs> five years. We drug that out in the legislature after uh, many, uh, many poundings in the House. Uh, that's almost 10% a year growth over the next five years. Excuse me. We need to stop experimenting with our energy supply and stop these massive subsidies to uh, wind producers that pay developers up to 80 cents a kilowatt hour with our tax money for energy that is selling approximately on the open market for 5 cents. This type of uh, business is simply unsustainable, unaffordable for families and businesses. Any kid, any kid knows you can't pay 80 cents for lemons and turn around and sell it at the street corner for an nickel. My children know that, my grandchildren know that, this government doesn't know it, but we're going to point that out soon. Don't get me wrong, I'm all in favor of renewable energy, and it should be a part of Ontario's long-term supply uh, with its wind turbines. It should be in communities where those communities welcome it, and uh, we intend to give the local municipalities a say again in where those wind turbines and those type of projects are located. Uh, the province here in Ontario took that away from them, and that's something we intend to restore. And we've also called for a moratorium on any further wind turbine uh, installations until it can be proven, beyond a doubt, <coughs> that uh, through a, a comprehensive health study that there's no long-term health effects to people that uh, live near those uh, wind turbines. We also need to cut red tape, and like I said, I've compliment what the feds are starting to do, and we also need to cut red, red tape in this province. I'm glad that the government has begun to do some work in this uh, regard. Ontario currently has over 500,000 different provincial regulations on hard-working Ontario business people and families. People have to <coughs> worry about going afoul of every day. I met with a businessman from, who ran a mill up in the northern Ontario. He told me that on any day that he opened his gate to, do, to try and make some pulp mill and, and process product, that he had anywhere from 14 different uh, federal, provincial, and municipal uh, government regulations that he had to worry about. Uh, that he might uh, have to report to. And he had one person that did, uh, they did nothing but file reports every day of the week because the federal guy would show up one day and want some certain statistics, and about two days later the provincial guy would show up, and then there's somebody there from the local ministry or the local municipality also <coughs> to check on. So th that type of stuff has to stop. We don't have that kind of money anymore in this province or this country, so I applaud what the feds are doing, and we need to get on board here in this province and do the same thing.